2. Habakkuk chapter 2. We're just going to read just three verses. Just three verses. Let's read it together. Are you ready? Are you ready, church? All three. One, two, three. I will take my stand at my watch post. to the end. It will not lie. Before you sit down, tell the persons next to you, God's appointed time. Thank you, musicians. God's appointed time. Oh, my Lord. We serve a God that's not bound by time. He sits outside of time. Therefore, he's not constrained by 24 hours. This is why God says one day is like a thousand years to him. And a thousand years is like a day to him because he's not constrained by time. There's not a box of time that you could put God in. It is amazing because this week I decided to buy an hourglass to kind of keep an hour going because I wanted to make sure that I kept my time. And, and the Holy Spirit gave me this word for you to say today based on that. It came in. He said, you are set up in between that hourglass. I am not. We are within, within time because even the Bible tells us that we are to live for 70 years, but for the ones that are more healthy, more robust, you could get to 80. So it is truly a matter of time that we are fighting with. I was telling in the children's ministry today, I said, you could lose things and get it back. You could lose money and get it back. You could lose friends and get them back. You could lose certain things and get them back. But one thing you could lose and never get it back, that is time. Let me tell you, church, you don't have much time left. You keep thinking that you do. So therefore, God has given me this word for you to let you know that there are certain things that need to be done this coming year. And he's setting you up. For you to understand, I went before the Lord, church, because this is a message I should preaching tonight. But God said, set it up for today. Because I want you to understand the one thing that you need for you to change your life this coming year and starting today is discipline. Somebody say discipline. <sighs> I don't know how many cookies I had to turn down. Discipline. I, 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 honestly, my story, I love the Serrano. I do. It's this Italian liquor. Everybody knows that. Yes. I would take a glass, Pastor Mark, every night so he could calm me down for me to go to sleep. But once I... help me go to sleep. I've been sleeping just fine. I was telling them that in the 9 a.m. service, sometimes my wife be talking to me while we're in bed. The moment my head hit that pillow, baby, did you hear what I said? <laughs> Fellas, y'all know what I'm talking about? Hmm. For you to be successful, you need discipline. And success requires some tough decisions that may cost you relationships and relaxation. I'm going to say that again. Success may cost you because it requires that you make decisions, some tough decisions that will cost you relationships and relaxation. Some of us can't be successful because we love to relax too much. We love our comfort. Some of us will get up to go to the gym, but the comfort of the bed. 
it's too sweet, it's too sweet, it's too nice. Some of us, you know, we're comfortable in relationships that are detrimental and toxic to us. Uh, but yet you think that yeah, this is going to help you, but it's really holding you back. You got to be able to make some moves for you to be able to have success, church. And that discipline is required. Discipline is to do something even when you don't feel like it. Discipline has nothing to do with feeling. It has to do with facts. I need to lose this weight. Therefore, I need to stop eating and go exercise. I know. That's the discipline. I need to make more money. Therefore, let me continue to go to school. Let me get certifications. Let me advance myself, continue to read. Because a lot of us, we would rather uh, do Netflix and chill rather than read a book in advance. I want you to understand success, it will cost you. There are times your friend want to go out and party. You got to get up at 5 in the morning. I ain't got time for that. Ah, can, can I be honest with you? There's a, they did a survey with people that are most wealthy and successful. They said by 10 a.m., they've done everything that they needed to do while you're still snoring. You're like, well, God said for me to rest. <laughs> I know y'all. <laughs> he didn't mean rest like that. There is rest and then there's thoughtfulness. Discipline is the backbone of success. How is it that you work two days a week and yet you expect to get paid for five? I want you to read the scripture. If you look at the scripture in Habakkuk chapter 2, this is a chapter we don't read very often. But Habakkuk, he said, I went up on my post. He said, I will take my stand. I want you to stop spiritualizing the things that you just need to do. Notice God then sent him on his watch post. He said, I will take my stand at my post. Watch post where I needed to be. This is where I am going to be. It has nothing to do with let me hear from the Lord first. Can I talk to you, church? When people ask you to do stuff in ministry, well, let me go before the Lord. I will take my stand at my watch post. It didn't say I will go before the Lord before I do it. God has gifted you. Do it. Oh, I'm messing y'all up. They tell you to go pray for somebody. Well, I don't know. I need, to, I, I need to hear from the Lord first before I pray for them. Really? You're called to pray without cease. You have to get on your post and stop. We, we give spiritual excuses for physical laziness. We're physically lazy and we're like, well, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, Stop. Can we stop spiritualizing everything on God? It's either God or the devil. Can we stop? Please. Please. You don't like the fellow, just say, my man, I don't like you. Don't say I need to go pray before about it. No. My brother, God has nothing to do with your game. You don't need to say, I, saw, I had a dream. God showed me that you were my wife. Says, I will take my stand at my watch post. I will go and do this, what needs to be done. God, there are times he comes to you when he, there's something, but you need to be able to have discipline to pray daily. You need to have a time that you get up, you're like, Lord, this is my time with you. I am going to seek you. But some of us have no discipline. One day you pray, the next day you're doing nothing. You wake up, the first thing you do is go on social media. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, you got to see what Instagram is talking about. 
What, 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 what's the new t uh, Twitter name? X. X and, and TikTok. My goodness. They're beginning to sound like some alphabet communities. But anyway, I'm, I'm, TikTok, X. It's, listen, every one of us should have a position that we go to, a place that we go to to seek the Lord. Amen. Notice he said, I will take my stand, my watch posts, station myself on the tower, and look out to see what he will say to me, and what he will answer me concerning my complaint. God is sitting there, and he went before the Lord. God didn't call him up. When I read Moses, the Bible said God called Moses up in the book of Numbers. But according to Habakkuk, Habakkuk is one that went himself and said, let me go here. I'm going to chill up here until I hear from God to see what he's going to say concerning my complaint. I've been talking to him about this problem and I haven't got an answer. Let me change my position. And this is what God is asking some of us to do today. Stop doing the same thing that you've been doing. Because he decided, you know what? Yeah, I've been talking to everybody down low. Let me go up high. Did you catch that? A watch post is not set low. It's set high. So he gets up there. But what you have to understand, once you get up there, not everybody could go up there. So don't expect everybody to pray with you when you're going through. Don't, everybody, don't expect everyone to be with you while problems are hitting you. Sometimes you just got to go up to the watchtower yourself. This is why you need discipline to seek God because no one will do it for you. I'm going to say that again. You need discipline to seek God because there are times no one will do it for you. I know sometimes we depend on grandmama's prayers. We depend on our daddy's prayers. Listen, I, I, I understand, but you have certain problems. Daddy can't do nothing for you. Mama can't do nothing for you. Grandmama can't do nothing for you. You got to be able to find God for yourself. Somebody say, find God for yourself. Let me continue with the message because the Bible says that for you just to write the vision down. So number one, we need discipline. Number two, we need to be able to communicate well. It's crazy how we serve the great communicator, but yet we don't know how to communicate. I serve the God that answers all prayers or answers prayers, but yet we don't know how to communicate with one another. <sighs> While I was preparing this, the Holy Spirit told me exactly what the issue was. But I'm going to get to it later. The first thing that I need you to do is to make sure that you write. But to write, you need to be able to have some type of comprehension. You need to be able to be equipped with reading skills. Well, first of all, you need to be able to have eyes. Unless you have braille. But for you to be able to write, you need to be able to have Oh, you don't believe me. If you close your eyes right now, you wouldn't be able to know what's on the screen. So you need to be able to have eyes is what gives you the vision. To be able to see ahead what's coming in 2024. What's coming in the future. I serve a God that when we call on him, he answers. But yet for some reason he sees what we don't and we call ourselves his. You need to be equipped with eyes so you could see. Second, you need to be equipped with reading skills. That means there has to be some type of training. One is given by God. Eyes. For you to be able to see. The next couple is you depending on somebody else to teach you. This is why you need one another. You can't everything that you know everything and all. You need somebody around you and people around you because, I, listen, I'm always learning. I'm always learning. I, I can't do the social media stuff. It's too much. I have a Samsung, Android. Praise God. It's okay, it's okay. I mix it well. I got an iPad. But the thing is, while I have a Samsung, you give me an Android, I'm like, okay, what do I do with this? 
This is foreign to me. Because I don't know everything. You always need to learn. Somebody else has to teach you. It's crazy because sometimes I'll sit with my wife and says, you know, hey, when I'm using her phone sometimes, I'm like, what, how do I get to? Huh. I don't see a back button. I have it here. There's a back button on my phone. All I see is a little circle in the center. Everything disappears. But you need to be able to have eyes to see. You need to be able to have reading skills. But not only reading skills, you need to be able to have writing skills. Last. So, one, God's given. Two, you need somebody else. Three, you have to go get it. The third one is write. So you, you need paper and pen to be able to write. You can't do it without it. What does that mean? One, you need God. Two, you need others. Three, you need to be able to do things for yourself. To be able to go out and get the writing devices to make sure that you put things down. And it says, write the vision down. But when I saw the scripture, the vision was not for you. It says, make a plain when others read it. Because God has put something in you for others, for your children, the generation coming afterwards, for other people that you have under your ministry, or under your leadership. God has blessed you where he is telling you, listen, I have this for you. You need to write it down and make it plain. The issue with our communication is that we like to complicate things. Even our relationships are complicated. When God is telling you, no, keep it plain, make it plain. Could you imagine if I came up here and I asked Sister Rachel, I'm like, well, you know, our relationship, it's complicated. How would you look at me? We're in a situationship. Yes. Me and my wife are in an intense, like, what in the world is going on in this? Oh, my God. We complicate everything, church. Somebody say, keep it simple. Write the vision down, make it plain, meaning keep it simple. What is it that God has told you? This is what God has told me. Keep it simple. You don't need to find 50 verses to connect to it just so you can sound deep. Keep it simple. Say it again. Keep it simple. Let me help you here because some of the issues right now that we have in our relationships is the fact that you guys don't know how to communicate. Correct communication is listening, direct speech with love without assumptions. I gave y'all something heavy right there. My shows, if y'all listen to me right now, you'll go far. Correct communication is listening and giving direct speech with love without any assumptions. That's clear communication. The issue is, we don't know how to communicate. For me to tell Pastor Bernardo I like his shirt. <laughs> Pastor Bernardo, you know, I saw that you were in the gym. You know, things were okay right now. But yet, you know, um, the thing is, um, just let him know. Man, you know what? I like that shirt. <laughs> it's that simple. We go around the rosy just to say one thing. Sometimes we're afraid because we don't know how the person will receive it. And then there's some assumptions there because anytime you assume, when you break it down, I do this in every council. Everybody knows it. Anytime you assume, what do you do? You make an ASS out of you and me. Y'all get it tomorrow. I want you to understand direct communication comes without assumption. When you're communicating with somebody, you can't think that they have your worst interest in mind. But yeah, that's the problem that we have now. When we communicate, you think the person isn't for you. Oh, they're against me. I don't need to hear what they're saying. You already shut down before a word came out their mouths. Talk to me, church. Talk to me, church. Your, your marriages can't work because you and your wife, y'all banging heads. 
She says, baby, I made a meal for you. You're like, did you poison me? <laughs> Assumption. Are you trying to poison me? These are assumptions that break down communication. Correct communication is listening, direct speech, with love, without... Oh, y'all scared to say it. Without assumptions. Imagine I'm trying to lose weight and my wife gives me a salad to eat. I'm like, what you trying to say? I'm fat. She's trying to help me for me to get to where I want to be. But for us, we're not listening well, and we come with that assumption thinking the worst of the situation. If you listen to this today, you'll have a peaceful 2024. Because most of your relationship issues have been, I'm not just talking about marriage, I'm talking about uh, just any relationship, friendships, you know, uh, any type of relationships, even co-workership, your colleagues. Yes, when you assume We serve the great communicator. Can we learn to communicate? The vision that God has given you. The Holy Spirit said to me that time is now that it will come to pass. I've been praying for you, church. And God has said the vision that he has given you, the set time is about to come to pass. Some of you are smart. Let me rephrase that. A couple of you are smart. (laughs) The reason I say that is if God has just told you the vision that he has given you, it's about to come to pass, then you should have stopped right there and begin to give God praise and say, Lord, thank you so much. I'm going to say it a third time just to see if you're smart. The vision that God has given you has a set time to come to pass by God. All right, we got some more smart people in here. Praise God. What I love about that passage that caught my attention is according to to Habakkuk chapter 2, it didn't say that the vision would die. It didn't say, it's crazy, let me read it for you. In verse 3, it says, for still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. To me, it should have said it will not die. But it said it will not lie. I looked at the different versions, languages, make sure that I understood it correctly. It it, It didn't mean lie has a dormant. It meant lie has if you're telling a lie. So it's. The vision at times, because it hasn't come to pass, you keep thinking that, oh man, God didn't tell me the truth. God is a man that he's not a man that he should lie. Every word that comes out of his mouth, the Bible says it will do exactly what he says that he will do. So the vision is not a lie. The vision did not lie, and God will do what he said that he will do. You have waited long enough, and God said, now is the time. Now is the time. The vision that he has given you, the vision for you to finish school, now is the time. The vision for you to get married, now is the time. The vision for you to start that business, now is the time. The vision for you to move forward in life, uh, now is the time. Uh, The vision for you to excel in life, uh, now is the time. Uh, The vision where God has given you for you to do some great things, uh, now is the time. Uh, The vision for you to take your career to the next level, now is the time. Uh, The vision for you to get closer to God, uh, now is the time. Uh, The vision that God has put forth in your life, uh, now is the time. Uh, There's no need to wait any longer. You have put in the discipline, you've put in the work, now is the time where God says, I am about to do it. The wait is over. Look at your day, but tell the wait is over. You have waited, but God said, now is the time. I don't know who it is that God is speaking to today, but find a neighbor and tell them, now is my time. Now is my time. No, no, they don't believe you. They don't believe you. They don't believe you. They don't believe you. 
Yeah, I'll find another neighbor that's got more faith. Uh, let them know, listen, now it's my time. 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 The vision that God has given me, now it's my time. It's my time. It's my time. God is about to do it. God is about to do it. I'm going to say it. God is about to I don't have time to play anymore. Isaiah said that we shall mount up on wings as eagles. I heard a preacher say this once and it stuck with me. I've never seen an eagle hang out with chickens. And I'm on eagle's wings. I can hang out with chickens. I can hang out with cowards. I can't hang out with people with no backbone. I can't hang out with people that's not strong in the Lord. I can't hang out with people that's going to take me down the wrong path. Uh, I've gotten on my watchtower. I've gotten on my post. Uh, and I am disciplined. And now is my time. I can't let anyone hold me back. If you're trying to hold me, I'm going to have to run you over spiritually. Because I... gonna do and now it's it you ain't got time to play anymore the time to keep watching TV is over I'm messing with y'all messing with y'all boy y'all been watching Facebook y'all been watching videos y'all been watching YouTube y'all been on Netflix too long and it's time you pick up a book and start doing some great things some of y'all have some books inside of you. The reason you have not put it together is because you have not picked up the pen and paper. The last step that you need to do. In the beginning. For you to be able to start putting things down on paper because the vision that God has given you, it's about to come to pass because now is the... I don't have time to waste. I don't have time to play. I don't have time to kiki. Listen, you got time for you to do everything. Spend four hours doing nothing. But for me, I don't have that time because my time is running out. And once I lose it, it is gone. God has appointed this time for you to be able to have success in life. Somebody say, now is the time. Some of us may have to give up some business relationships. They've been holding you. You gotta be able to say, I'm gone. Let me get my own LLC. Let me incorporate myself. You thought that we were successful because of you, but you need to let them know you were successful because of the God in me. I told my old boss that one day. My so he was talking a whole bunch of trash. I said, listen, my man, this company is only successful because I'm here. He said, what do you mean? I said, the Holy Spirit in me is guiding your thoughts and your process for you to do things right. That went over your heads. He got upset. He was like, oh, yeah? That's okay. He tested the theory. He tested the theory. In 08, when the market tanked and crashed, I was the first one to let go. He cried his eyes out, saying, you know what, let's see, you know, I'm sorry that we're going to have to do this. I said, that's cool. But the company was never the same. I just came back from New York, and I saw a bank. I didn't say anything to anybody, but I saw a bank that says m and Bank that I used to give support to. They used to call for support when I was doing their IT. And now, they completely left them. And everybody has left them. The company went from about to grow to 100 to now, I believe it's at 15 people. And I said, exactly what I told you, you didn't want to listen. There's a blessing in your life. The vision that God has given you. A lot of times people are blessed because they're connected to you. Because of the Holy Spirit that is in you. But the moment you depart, ah, everything starts crumbling down. 
I don't know about you today, but it's time for you to make some big moves. Huh, I'm glad somebody called it. It's time for you to make some big moves. I'm going to say it a third time so I can get in your spirit. It's time for you to make some big moves. The time is now. The time is now. I don't know what 2024 is going to bring, but the time is now. You can't hang out with chickens anymore. It's time for it to soar like an eagle. It's time for you to get on eagle's wings. I'm going to say it again. It's time for you to get on eagle's wings. I've never seen the Bible talk about chicken like anything except to eat. But for us, eagles is what I am. I am going to mount on wings uh, like eagle. I will walk and not faint. Uh, I will run and not grow weary. I don't know about you today, but it's time that you get on eagle's wings uh, and start doing what God has called you to do. I'm going to tell you again one last time. Uh, it's my time. I don't have time to play. I don't have time to uh, kiki with you. My time is now. My time is now. If your time is now. Ushers, do we have any papers left? Praise God. I want you to start writing down the vision that God has for you for 2024. Bring it tonight. Bring it tonight. Bring it tonight with your $100 gift to the Lord to say thank you. They're handing them out. Tonight we'll have more. If it finishes, that's fine. We'll have more tonight. For you to write it down. Tonight, after the service, we're going to pray on them, and then we're going to burn them as a sweet incense unto God. Whew. Write it down. The time is now. The time is now. That's why the Bible says that he is a very present help.